As I walked through this year's CES 2020, what I kept running into were routers with something called Wi-Fi 6E on them, and they kept talking about 6 gigahertz. Now today, I'm going to tell you why that is more important than what everyone has been talking about, and that is Wi-Fi 6. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to save you time in your smart life by keeping you focused on the right wireless technologies. I really haven't talked about Wi-Fi 6 a ton and I even reviewed the Nest Wi-Fi system which does not have Wi-Fi 6 on it and said it was a fantastic system and more than enough for what many of you are going to need. But today we're going to talk about where 6E steps away from 6 and why it's so important for you. Wi-Fi 6 did something incredible for Wi-Fi in general. Don't get me wrong, this was a major leap in terms of the connectivity options that we had and in terms of the overall speed and throughput we could get through a router at that point. And this gave router manufacturers a lot of opportunity to go out and create incredible systems for your home. Now, what they didn't have access to to at that point was enough bandwidth and this is something that you and I deal with on a regular basis and to be honest I've been able to put out a lot of video content that has helped people with this issue so uh, I guess my job is over but when when you look at what goes on with your wireless networks and when you try and diagnose issues what you find is all your neighbors yourself you're all just crammed into a very small section of of what is wireless frequencies and you know what when you look at 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, you basically have this tiny, tiny bandwidth and 20 megahertz channels between that. And that's why you see this channel 1 to 11 oftentimes kind of laid out on different diagnostic tools. And you, you see that those are 20 megahertz bandwidth channels. Now, what you will also see is the 5 gigahertz range, which kind of has a, it has a bigger range to it. You could have from kind of 5100 megahertz all the way up to almost uh, 5900 megahertz. But that still, you're not seeing a lot of usage of those different sections. And what has to happen, because it's around an actual usage range of around 300 megahertz that is being employed right now, what's happening is we're still getting crammed in on 5 gigahertz as well. So what happens between you and your neighbors and you and your own Zigbee networks and your own... Uh, other wireless systems that you have going on, there's just a ton com just combined into this little, little space. So what Wi-Fi 6 is doing is it's bringing us to 6 gigahertz. Now actually the range is like 5,900 gigahertz to just about 7,000 gigahertz or just over 7,000, I think it's 7,100. So that gives us 1,200 megahertz of bandwidth here. And this is so important because wireless AX, one of the big things of wireless AX and this 6e is that it can have 160 megahertz bandwidth channels so it needs a lot of space in order to achieve these massive throughput numbers that we've been looking at so this kind of a space was really required in terms of that overall bandwidth so that we didn't have everybody's wi-fi networks overlaid over top of each other and really interfering with each other. This issue that I'm talking about has given rise to things like Z-Wave and uh, another IoT protocol called LoRa or LoRa that's being used in lots of smart cities, so to speak. Now, when you consider that, it has actually complicated your life in more ways than one because you have to understand the term Z-Wave. You have to know how to work with Zigbee within your wireless network at home. And the point of having all this bandwidth available for Wi-Fi is that you can get all of your devices out of the way. Now, what's recently happened in order to support all of this is, number one, the FCC in the US actually opened up unlike Unlicensed spectrum, this unlicensed spectrum, and that means that not just Wi Fi can use it, but other manufacturers can use it because it's unlicensed, and as long as people are using it in reasonable ways, they can use these bandwidths or these, these frequencies. So 
that has made it available. Wi-Fi can now, as 802.11 develops and as they go and create other protocols and other standards and better standards, they can use that frequency. Now, the other side of it is device manufacturers have to be on board. And this is one of the reasons I haven't really knocked manufacturers in the past for not having AX. It's because this was always coming behind it and this was part of a three-part series of improvements to Wi-Fi 6 that are really important for that standard and Wi-Fi 6 was actually just the first part and this bandwidth issue was always there that was always the problem and Wi-Fi 6 didn't get us out of that on its own so this is moving the ball quite a bit now the manufacturers have actually come in and said yeah we're fully on board we have uh, chips from Broadcom and Qualcomm, Linksys and Netgear have jumped on board and said they are, they are all for this because it's going to help them produce better products. Apple has said this is a major shift for the industry and uh, I believe it's Intel will have chips out as well within a year. So you're, you're seeing a lot of the chip makers be there really quickly with this just as this is approved in the US for usage. So it's all there, the routers are there, I saw them all over CES, and the whole industry is ready to jump on this because they all see it as so important. Now let me give you some of the realistic components of this. Five gigahertz to six gigahertz isn't really going to change your speed. Now, there is some research that suggests uh, smartphones will actually get a massive increase in speed on your home Wi-Fi network. One to two gigabits per second people are talking about at this point. Uh, the other things that I have seen is really in terms of penetrating walls we know five gigahertz has some issues around that and so it takes more points to kind of cover a home six gigahertz is really the same and um, you're not going to see a big difference now if you could get a six gigahertz wi-fi router or hub or uh, mesh point in the middle of people's homes you would get almost all of their homes in a lot of cases with the expected power levels that we're going to require for these. So reading a lot of the research that's been done around this, there's really not a big difference in terms of five and six gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi 6 or AC or AX and uh, the new 6E protocol here at six gigahertz. There's not a lot of differences there, but the speed increase overall comes from the ability to have these really high bandwidth signals or really large signals essentially because we have so much bandwidth space available to us in the six gigahertz range. The other reality around this is your old devices at 2.4 and five gigahertz, well, they're not really going to change. They will still be at that level, but this gives you six gigahertz options. You can move all of these devices and it now gives us three options when we're talking about realigning devices all over our Wi-Fi network. So this is a huge benefit to us in that way. It just won't necessarily take your 2.4 gigahertz wise cams and move them to six gigahertz. Now, wireless standards are always, in, in terms of Wi-Fi here, they are always backwards compatible. So if your device is 6E capable, that means it will be all the way back to 802.11B compatible all of those different protocols it'll have available to it so that's uh, that's an in general statement but that's what will go on especially with the routers they'll have all of those backwards compatibility options really highly beneficial now i did talk about zigbee z-wave and wi-fi and you know what for a while guys i've been pointing you towards wi-fi as really being the ultimate solution to the smart home and this proves it even further. Now, I did in 2019 make a video that compared Zigbee to Z-Wave to Wi-Fi and took a lot of heat for saying, you know what? Some of those older protocols, they're going to have to get essentially updated, upgraded to keep up with Wi-Fi for what Wi-Fi is doing. Now, you can still go watch that video. It's up on screen. I think it's highly powerful and still really relevant, especially given this new news. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching. And of course, don't hate, automate.